In an energy context, biomass refers to burnable material derived from wood or other plants, and usually one of the following. Woody materials such as specially harvested fast-growing crops like willow or poplar, fast-growing tall grasses such as elephant grass, forestry residues from managed woodland, and finally, other byproducts such as sawdust or wood chippings from sawmills or wheat straw from farms. These fuels are considered to be sustainable as the amount of carbon dioxide emitted when they're burnt is recaptured by the fresh growth of new crops or trees. Biomass fuels are supplied in a number of different forms from logs, wood pellets and wood chips to sawdust or briquettes. These all vary in size, weight and other physical properties and so are used in a range of different equipment. There are several ways to generate energy from biomass. Almost always this involves combustion or put simply burning and the majority of community-sized biomass systems use this process. The heat produced by burning the wood chips, logs or other biomass is used directly for room or water heating or in large-scale systems to produce steam. This is then converted into electricity using a steam turbine. Biomass can also be converted into liquid biofuels for transportation, but this isn't relevant to us here. In the UK, power stations burn large volumes of biomass to generate electricity. At the other end of the scale, biomass is also used to provide heat in domestic housing using open fires, wood stoves, or boilers supplied by wood pellets. In between are the medium-scale biomass systems, such as those used to heat community halls or small businesses, or to heat several different buildings that share a district heating system. Systems known as CHP combined heat and power, use biomass to generate electricity via a steam turbine or other similar device, but they also use the waste heat from this process to provide heating. This option can be the most efficient use of biomass resources. The simplest use of biomass fuel is found in the humble but increasingly stylish log stove. Considerably more efficient than open fires, these come in various shapes and sizes. And if you're keen to heat your house with wood fuel on a limited budget, this is probably your best bet. Log-fired boilers are a logical step up from stoves. They range from systems designed for hot airspace heating, found in some workshops and similar premises, to boilers designed to run domestic heating and hot water. Pellet boilers come in all sizes, from small domestic to a big power station. The smaller systems are supplied by hopper or filled manually from bags. The bigger systems, say for a school or leisure centre, have separate bulk storage hoppers, which can often be filled just once a year via a long pipe. Wood chip boilers are similar but tend to be larger than pellet fired boilers because wood chips require a more robust feed and burning system. You will see them in settings such as blocks of flats, visitor centres, offices and hospitals. Wood chip quality is vital. Boiler manufacturers will specify a chip size and moisture content and you should make sure that your contract for fuel supply specifies this. Wood chips can be produced from round wood by using specialised machinery. This produces a uniform size of chip. Since wood chips require less processing than pellets and less manual handling than logs, they can be extremely energy efficient. Country estates, farms or other sites that have access to woodland can supply their wood chip boilers themselves and either do their own chipping or use a specialist contract chipper. A number of buildings can also be connected to the same biomass boiler via a district heating system. As you'll realise by now, if you want a biomass system, you'll need somewhere to keep the fuel. Unlike other types of renewable energy, it doesn't come down a cable or through a pipe. Sometimes this will mean taking over some or all of an existing building or putting up a new one where logs, pellets or wood chips can be stored. For wood chip, the storage area needs to be suitably airy, so the material can dry out naturally. Freshly chipped wood has a high moisture content and if it's too wet, it will start to rot and your system will burn much less efficiently. Where possible, try to minimise the distance your fuel has to travel to get to you. This will minimise the cost of transport and the associated carbon emissions. 
Large users, such as power stations, often source their fuel from abroad, where, sadly, ancient forest is cleared to make way for fast-growing biofuels. You should investigate in some detail whether your wood fuel supply is really sustainable. You might consider negotiating wood fuel or pellet supply contracts with local forestry estates or sawmills. This will help support British rural industry. Even if you live in a smoke-free zone, you will still be able to install a biomass boiler as long as the model you wish to use is on the government's list of exempt appliances. But you should still be aware of the potential of biomass systems to emit smoke along with other chemicals. One way to keep emissions to a minimum is to maintain the boiler in a good condition and ensure that your fuel is not too wet. You should also ensure that the fuel is clean and avoid using contaminated fuels such as wood waste, which may have been treated with chemicals. There's also the problem of ash. The ash that falls through the grate during combustion is known as bottom ash, which can actually form a valuable fertiliser for the garden or allotment. This introduction to biomass should show you that there are a range of fuels and system sizes that could be suitable for you. Other parts of this resource will talk you through establishing a biomass project in more detail. You can also find a wealth of detailed information on biomass crops and the systems on the Biomass Energy Centre website. Thanks for watching.